Good morning. Or if you're watching this later, good morning, momming the Millers. Um, I guess I just see your names. You didn't actually wave at me. I just saw that you joined and now it feels weird because I called you out and you didn't need to be. But good morning anyway. Good morning to Marie. Good morning to Mary. Good morning to... Kaya? I try and guess based on your your screen, your usernames, and I don't do it well. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. We did it. We survived. We made it here. Yay us. Um, yay us. Uh, why? What was I? I don't even, I was going to, I don't remember what I was. Yep. I'm just going to have more coffee. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to start there. Let's let everyone get gathered. You know what? Let's do, we haven't done a roll call in a while. Will you say your name? And where you are tuning in from this morning. Tell us where in the world, it's like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where in the world are you? Let's see who's here and where you're watching from while I just get just a little bit more caffeine in my system. Tracy, I agree. Thank goodness it's Friday. Also, this is making my ear. There we go. Let's do that. Um, Nellie from Rhode Island. Good morning. Good morning, New York. Good morning, Erica from West Palm Beach. Nicole from Newton, Pennsylvania. Uh, good morning, Heather from Ohio. Dana from Iowa. And she says, I have no motivation. Dana, I'm taking that as a personal challenge to motivate you today. So hold, hold up. Let's see who else is here. We've got Megan from Springville. Nicole from New York. Lauren from Virginia, uh, good morning. Have, oh, Dawn from Havelock, am I saying that right? In Canada. Uh, Melissa, we got Deb from Lincoln, Nebraska. Deb, I have a special place in my heart for, it, for anybody from Nebraska because that's where my daughter was born. Uh, what else? Amanda from Salina, Texas. We got Calgary in the house, Stanford, Ontario. We've got Martina from Slovakia. Love when we have an international audience tuning in. We got Steph from Australia. Steph, is it nighttime there? I forget how the time works. Is it nighttime or is it like super early morning? Um, so yeah, good morning, guys. And like I said, we made it to Friday. I'm proud of us. Um, it's been, this week felt like it was three weeks long and I'm going to straight up tell you that I had really bad insomnia last night. I could not fall asleep. Too many thoughts swirling through my brain. Anyone else here struggle with insomnia? You can see my struggle with insomnia. I should probably put on some little, little eye patches. Hello to you in Iran. Oh, well, thank you. Sticks and Stones Design said I'm looking so pretty today. I take that. I appreciate it. That's super kind. Um, yeah. So I see some of some of the other ones had uh, had or, or struggle with insomnia as well. I I used to have it really bad when I was younger. I didn't sort of know the tips and the tricks. I hadn't done the research, so I didn't know um, some ways to treat it. So now if I get it and I know all those tips and tricks, I'm like, all right, here we go. What is this gonna take? How long is it gonna take? Um, and for me, it's usually, um, it's one of two reasons I get insomnia, either because I'm feeling anxiety about something or because I'm excited about something, like a new project and I sort of can't get my mind to shut off. And last night was, was anxiety. And um, it's okay, I've struggled with anxiety most of my adult life and I feel like I really, know how to handle it but in a season like this one there's just so much going on um you know the kids and i'm filming the show and we're getting ready for our next virtual conference and we I have a book coming out at the end of september and just there's so many things and i think if you um either own your own business or maybe you're a leader at your company or you're a leader in your family that that anxiety can creep up because you feel very responsible. I have a lot of responsibilities. I have a lot of people counting on me. Can anyone relate where you feel like you are responsible for a lot of things and a lot of people? And the anxiety comes from that moment of like, oh crap, is this too many things? Like, is, this is a lot of stuff. Um, and I find myself, I really am not able to calm down and go to sleep until I can do the work 
to remind myself that I am in control, to remind myself that I, like I look back on past experiences and I am like, sis, because I coach myself, I'm like, girl, you have done this before, you will do this again, we will come out of this strong, we will do the work, like your creator gave you the ability to do this and so you, like I, I really have to have that sort of coaching conversation with myself. I'll bust out my journal sometimes, I kind of journal my thoughts because I think that when we have thoughts swirling in our minds, it really helps us to get them down on paper. But it took a hot minute last night. Um, you know I love my sleep and I didn't really get my sleep last night. So it's also um, a little, does anyone else feel like you get insomnia on the night before you need sleep the most? Anyone else? What is that? Why? It's so rude. Like, could I have insomnia on a Friday night when I don't have anything to do tomorrow? Like, it's always when I'm like, well, I have to go do an entire day of shooting and production and my mind needs to be really sharp. And then I'm like, <laughs> you're going to get four hours of sleep. Congratulations. So anyway, um, just wanted to just wanted to dig into that today. Wanted to tell you kind of where I'm at. And since it's Friday, I would love to do a Q&A with you guys. We put something in, in my stories recently where we asked what questions people had. I'm working on a podcast where I'm answering your specific questions. And we asked, hey, what are the questions that you have related to health? So physical health, emotional health, um, therapy, anxiety, um, you know, uh, nutrition, anything related to health. We, we put that out and we got so many answers, so many answers. I won't even be able to answer them all on podcasts. And so I thought I would just ask here, you know, you, I, I think if you're watching my company right now, you can see that we're really leaning into the health space as a response to so many questions that we've gotten from you. I really want to change the way that we approach health. I really want to change the narrative. I really want to have conversations about how many of us as women are raised to feel shame about our bodies. Um, we're raised to approach health as a punishment for something that we ate or a punishment because we don't look a certain way. So um, we're really leaning into the health space and I'll tell you, I don't, this is not all leading up to some big like, here's my powder, here's my pill, here's, I don't, I don't have, anything to sell you. Um, it's just conversations that I want to be having. And if there are, um, if you want to, like we have the app or we have different things, but this conversation is not, we're not, this is not money. This is just, I know that it's something I struggle with. And if I struggle with it, and frankly, I have the support that I have and the circle that I have and the friends that I have, I, I, I assume that you must struggle with it too. So let's use this time together this morning to dig into those questions. So um, I'll just jump on the first thing I see. How do I build confidence in myself? I'm a recovering people pleaser, aren't we all? And I wanna feel confident about myself from myself. So I just wanna ask a follow-up question here. And if you answer it, I can really dig in with you. Do you feel like you want confidence in feeling confident in how you are when you walk into your room, feeling confident in the way that you look. And I, I wanna be really clear on this, that it, we should not be pursuing looking a certain way, right? And so when I say the way you look, I don't mean like, oh, do you have six pack abs? And you, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that we as women oftentimes struggle with thinking that other people are looking at us. So it's not even about like, oh, I don't have that body type. It's like, oh my gosh, people are looking at me. Is there something on my face? Is my hair weird? Like, is it that kind of self-consciousness or is the confidence in speaking your mind? Is the confidence that you need about standing up in front of a room and giving a speech? Like, tell me specifically what kind of confidence you're struggling with and then I can answer. So that sort of goes to anybody who's asking a question. The more specific, the more context you can give me, the better I can answer that. You're right, Melanie, I do have a Rise app to sell, but I have done over a thousand live streams, just like this one, over the last five years, where I tune in every day, and I talk to you, and I spend time with you, and I answer things for free. I have 3,000 posts on my blog that I've written over the last decade that don't cost anything. 
I have a podcast with hundreds of episodes that I've never charged for one time. YouTube videos, 100,000 subscribers, don't charge money for that. So I do have an app as a response to questions that I got from you as a community for how to do things. The app, by the way, that is $9.99, making it one of the least expensive health and fitness and mindset apps that are on the market today. Um, so yeah, I do have things I sell as part of my business, but what I'm talking about right now is us hanging out in a way where I am sitting with you and giving you my time and have never charged for this. So yeah, don't look for the negative when there isn't any. Don't look for the negative. I don't, what is that? I'm not sure what that's serving. All right, let's dig into questions. Um, we would love to know which books you've read that you have loved. Um, so I'm wondering, do you mean in the health space? So in the health space, I can, um, you probably heard me talk about to before Feeling Good by Dr. David D. Burns, which is about um, mindset and anxiety and this idea that we feel based on what we think. And so if you learn to control your thoughts and learn to control your mindset, you can really affect the way that you're feeling. Um, I love Body Love by Kelly Levesque. You guys have probably heard me speak about that before. Um, health, health, health books. Uh, oh, shoot. Um, I love Mindset by Carol Dweck. I mean, I really feel like for me, in terms of health, I really care way more about what's going on up here than like what this is like what's this looking like. So most of the books that I've read in the health space would really tend to lend themselves more to um, mindset, thought process, anxiety, things like that. Okay, where do I get my eye patches from? Good question. Um, Amazon. Uh, my favorite brand is a brand called Skin Iceland. It's like S K Y N, I think. Um, there's lots of really good ones, but those are my favorite. Okay. Do, do, do. What's your settling down routine in the evening to help you shut down and try to get some rest after the kids are in bed? I'm going to be super honest right now. I, the bedtime routine feels so long that I fall into bed. I, you know, I, to be honest with you, when I, when we were in a two parent household, bedtime routine was much calmer because there was someone to sort of um, like tag team with. So like, hey, I'll, I'll do Noah and then you do the boys and that, or, or hey, I'll take tonight, you take tomorrow. And so my bedtime routine was much more thoughtful and sort of practiced. And honestly, that is not the world that I live in right now. The world that I live in right now is, um, I spend a lot of time getting Noah down, shower, pajamas, book, prayers, song. We have a very elaborate like thumb, pinky, high five, the kiss, hug. Like it's a whole, it's a very long process that we have. Um, and then once I'm done with her, I go upstairs to the boys. That's a whole process. And then I come down into this room and I am dead. So Someday, I'd like to believe that when we have a little bit, when it feels a little bit calmer around here, that that bedtime routine will be better for me. But right now, there really isn't one. Um, question. Um, okay, let's see, I answered that. Oh my gosh, finding your voice. Such a good question. I literally, yesterday for Quibi, I taped an entire week of teaching on how to find your voice, how to communicate effectively, how to speak your mind, even when it's hard, like an entire week. It's coming up, oh, probably in a couple months. So look for that on the Quibi show. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So strategies to handle anxiety. I've talked about this quite a bit, but I'll just tell you some of the things that really helped me years ago when I started digging into this. Number one, I know I'm a broken record, but therapy. Therapy is a huge deal for me. Therapy has helped me so much to understand why I'm being triggered. So anxiety doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's typically triggered by an anxious thought. And I really believe that if we can understand why we're having the thought or what triggered us, that that will help us to sort of um, get control of the way that we're feeling. So therapy was huge for me, incorporating movement into every single day. And if you wanna know why I started doing Five to Thrive, why I started preaching on this idea of moving your body for 30 minutes, why I built an app, 
All of these things were because the number one question I got from you guys was how to deal with anxiety. And because I don't know the context of each of your lives, because I don't know what triggers you, I couldn't, I couldn't speak effectively to millions of people and say, oh, go do this thing. But I knew for a fact that if you would incorporate movement into your life, that that would lower cortisol in your body and that would at least help you manage the anxiety better. So moving your body every day, paying attention to caffeine intake, um, having three shots of espresso or having a bunch of caffeine and having anxiety feel very similar in the body. So you have a feeling in your stomach, you feel jittery, you, it's, so you have a very similar feeling. And if you struggle with anxiety and you start to have that feeling, your nervous system, because it's so wired, because it knows that feeling so well, is like, oh my gosh, we're having an anxiety attack. And it will make you have one. But truly, you're not actually having an anxiety attack, you just tweaked out on too much caffeine. So paying attention to caffeine intake, paying attention to sugar intake, paying attention to how the foods that you're eating make you feel. And then the last thing, I swear by this, I tell everybody, my staff is so sick of me talking about it. Um, there's a supplement called Holy Basil Leaf. Holy Basil Leaf, it's an adaptogen. You can look up what adaptogens do. They sort of help stabilize your mood for back, lack of a better word. I am incredibly sensitive to any kind of medicine. So it's hard for me to find something that like doesn't make me tired or doesn't make me feel a weird way. Holy basil, I swear by. I take one every night before I go to bed and I I, I felt like it was, I feel like the effects are life changing. I'm super passionate about it. So, um, so someone just said, how will new workouts be released on the app? So they get released several times a week right now. I think it, I'm so bad. It's either Monday through Friday or it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we're working on in the app like a kind of a place that you can see all the workouts at once because maybe you've noticed that they're categorized. So you could look for a workout based on instructor. You could look for a workout based on time or feeling, right? But if you're not looking in each section, then you won't know that there's new stuff. So um, we're working on a like a feed where you can see like, oh my gosh, they dropped 10 new workouts. We have taped so many workouts. So check the sections. If you're not seeing something new, maybe just move to a different, um, move to a different area. Um, so someone just said, I've been writing the same goals in my Start to Day journal for well over a year. A lot has changed. I feel like I'm giving up on those goals, but I've changed so much that they don't apply. I think that's amazing. I have dropped things from my Start Today journal many times in the course of what I'm doing because I've elevated and so that thing no longer matters or maybe I was writing a goal and then the more that I grew, the more I was like, you know what, I actually don't want that thing in my life, I want this thing. So I think the best thing that can happen to you is that you're evolving. Um, how, do I get a, how do I motivate myself to get up and run every morning? Well. Do you like to run? That's a pretty important place to start. Are you running because you think you're supposed to or are you running because you love it? Because if you love something, it's not hard to get you out of bed to go do it. So if you don't love running, then I would challenge you to find some kind of movement that you really do like to do. Um, if you love running and you're just struggling to get out of bed, then okay, work backwards. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough good sleep? Do you have the energy that you need? Should you move your runs to a different time of day? Um, so, so sort of approach it in those ways. Um, what are your go-to healthy lunch and dinner ne meals? Need some help and good advice. I honestly, it's so funny. Yesterday I did um, an interview for Women's Health Magazine, which is cool. Um, and in the interview, I also did a video where I, I took viewers on a fridge tour and I sort of explained here's what we eat and here's how we do it and so that's coming out pretty soon but I think on it I just tend to eat the same thing over and over I really only experiment with what I'm eating when I'm at a restaurant because when it's me I'm just like okay I know the kids will eat this I know I'll eat this I just do it over and over and and honestly it's kind of basic um, I do a protein, some kind of green vegetable, and then I'll have um, a, a carb for the kids, so something like rice or pasta. And then I tend to just eat the protein and the salad, unless maybe I have a long run the next day, and then I eat um, the carbs to give me a little extra energy. Um, okay, okay, okay. Oh, love the shirt. Thank you so much, Denise. Um, 
Okay. How do I start this health journey with my six-year-old daughter? Okay, great question. And again, I don't know context here, so I just want to caution you that I think we have to be incredibly careful about how we approach health with our kids. I think with your kids, it's about you living a healthy lifestyle that they are part of. It is not about you talking to them about, hey, we're going to go we're, we're going to go work out, right? So like even with Noah, Noah is in the gym with me many days a week because I'm out there and I have, she's three, I have no one to watch her. But I'm like, hey, come play in the gym with me, right? Like she'll play, she'll, you know, there's like two pound weights that she like plays with or she'll try to use the, you know, Pilates ring as like a hula hoop. Like she just plays. Um, Even like um, one of my sons was talking about, like he was talking the other day about like, oh, I want to like have six pack abs or something. And he was saying it, which like, nope, none of us have it. So I don't know where he's getting that from, maybe from like TV or, or something. And I was like, he said it in such a way that I was like, I could almost tell like, uh-oh, this is starting to be a thing. And I was like, you are amazing. You, what are you talking about? We don't need to change anything. Like you, I was, I turned it into like this hype up. Like, why would we even pursue that? What are you going to do with six pack abs? Like you're 12. Like what is... I think we have to be really careful about this conversation because it is so, and it, guys, it's super important. It's not just about what you say, it's about what you do. In fact, I was talking to this, talking about this with the reporter at Women's Health of being really conscious of um, eating what my kids eat, um, making sure at dinner that we're all eating the same foods and not that I'm making them something and then making myself something separate so that it, it's almost without saying, inferring this idea that there's like, something wrong with what they're eating but maybe something right with what i'm eating so um for for what that's worth um let's see um a lot of people asking about uh the divorce right now um dave and i split up back in may and we have talked about it on podcasts. Uh, I've talked about it in my email every week um, when it first happened, and I wrote a post about it. Um, you can go check those things out. I don't really want to dig into it here. We're just going to keep it positive today. Um, rise up in Armenia. I would love that. We are working on trying to get that app in other countries. First up is Canada, though. Canada, you know I see you. We are working so hard to get you that app. Um, okay. Will you do more with QVC? Right now, no plans to do that, but we are working on some really cool product for fall, for holidays, so for like gift giving and stuff. Um, I think you guys are gonna re I'm very excited. We've been working on it for a long time. Um, I have PTSD and I have a hard time staying present in my triggers. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. I hope that you are going to therapy. I also have PTSD. Um, maybe if you've read my first nonfiction book, if you read Girl, Wash Your Face, you know why. Um, and it still shows up for me and it will show up, I think, for the rest of my life. It's not debilitating in the way that it once was, but I can have stuff that is very triggering for me. Um, you know, um, not uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go into it on a Friday morning. Feels like a little intense, but yeah, I can absolutely have stuff that's triggering me. So I feel like it's about understanding and unpacking why you are triggered, and understanding what you can do when you are triggered. So those are two separate things. Um, let's see. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just trying to read your questions. Um, okay, so some, I just, I want to come back to this because you were the one I was talking to from the beginning. It's about confidence. I want clarity on how to be more confident in who I am walking into a room, speaking my mind without needing the approval of others. So I think what you're asking is actually more, how do you have confidence in yourself so that you don't need other people to like you? You don't need to please others. No, it's going to... No, it's going to scream down. Um, so that you don't need other people to like you. Okay. 
oh my gosh, I feel like I could teach like an entire course on just this one topic. Um, I think that this is about research, okay? I know that sounds weird, but it really helps me to arm myself with information. I tend to find that I feel most insecure in my life when I don't have knowledge on the subject that I'm speaking on. So for instance, when it's about um, um, like uh, writing something or, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Okay, so like a lot of people asking about this morning so that it's what's on my brain, but um, my husband and I split up in May. It's the end of August, but apparently some of you did not hear that. Um, and in that announcement, um, an incredible amount, an incredible amount of um, hateful comments on social media and people writing really mean things. And for what it's worth, um, nobody's saying those things to the man in the relationship, only people aiming things at me. Um, for getting divorced, which it's 2020. And so I'm really confused about that, but that's a whole other topic. And because it was something that I had never encountered before, because it's something I didn't have a lot of information about, I did feel some insecurity around being able to show up and being able to lead well when I felt like people would push back on me or people wouldn't like me or I wouldn't be pleasing to people because I had done something that stepped outside of the box that they had put me in. So that felt very distressing for me. And rather than sort of tuck my tail between my legs and kind of run away or stop showing up and stop doing this work and stop you know, running this business, I had to arm myself with information. So I had to read books on divorce. I had to read books on what it means to um, be a co-parent. I had to listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos, which P.S. Oh my word, the YouTube videos about divorce are the most depressing. Don't even look them up. They're awful. Um, so I had to arm myself with information so I could kind of understand this world so that I could feel more centered in who I am and what's happening right now in my life. And I could show up in a way that allows me to understand that strangers on the internet who do not understand my personal life, who do not understand what has happened in my marriage, don't get to affect the way I feel about how I show up, right? Like if I do something awful. If I like go out, there's video of me and I'm like kicking a puppy. Like, yes, attack me. I'm a jerk. Like, please, let's go. But you attacking someone that you don't know based on the this much context that you have over their life without understanding the full story, simply because you don't agree with the choice they made, says a lot more about that person than it does about me, right? I said, I talked about this earlier in the week, but that when someone does, like if someone doesn't like you, and I'm sorry, I didn't see your name. If someone doesn't like you for speaking your mind and being who you are authentically, they are not your people. They are not for you. And you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to love yourself enough, which I know is something that many of us need to learn, but you have to love yourself enough to not fall victim to needing them to love you in order for you to have worth, right? So for me, I arm myself with information. I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but it really helps me to do my research, to look at other people who've walked through this, to talk to a therapist, to talk to friends who've gone through this process, to remind myself like, oh yeah, this is who I am. If I am confident in who I am, I don't need you to love me for me to feel like I have value, right? We're only pleasing when we're unsure of our own worth because we think if I can just tap dance for you enough, if I can just make you like me enough, if I can just say the right things or show up in the way or be sweet enough or be whatever it is, then I will receive love. This is about, confidence is about I love me. I love me as I am. I love me with my imperfections. I love me. And if you don't love me, cool, because I love me enough for both of us. I hope that makes sense. All right, I did this whole thing and I like have missed so many questions. Oh my gosh. And I have to go because I have to go to Quibi and I wanted to, um, yes, 
That that's what it is today. That is what's happening, you guys. Um, right. Um, do you have any co-parenting books recommendations? So the one that I just read was Mom's House, Dad's House, and I really like that one. And then I'm also loving the Whole Brain Child. That's not about co-parenting, but it is really good book for parents. Um, how do I get to know me? You dig in, right? You journal, you spend time with yourself, you you quiet your mind, you go on long walks, you ask yourself. Like, this is nothing, Dave is incredible. This is nothing to him. But I am so blown away by how many things in my life right now, and I bet, I haven't talked to him about this, but maybe he would also say the same thing, that I forgot that I loved because he didn't like them. Maybe this, I, I would assume this is a very normal thing in a relationship. We were together for 18 years. But I can't tell you how many things I stopped doing, stopped loving, stopped pursuing because my partner didn't like them. And I guarantee if I asked him, he'd probably be like, yeah, I love a lot of things that I didn't do because we were together. But it, it, it makes me realize how much we lose ourselves in the pursuit of a relationship with other people. And this season has been hard and awful and scary and stressful and all the things, but you know me and I tend to look for what is, what is the positive in this? And a positive, a silver lining is the time to remember what you love, what you're into, like the things that maybe your partner teased you about or thought were silly that you, I can recognize now like, oh yeah, I had a little embarrassment about being into that thing and now that it's just me, I'm like, all right, let's go. You really are excited about that specific thing? Like, let's watch all of, like, this is so dumb, but it's not. I grew up loving, like, fantasy, like, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, like, is there a sword? Is there magic involved? Is it an ancient land? Is there world building? I that, that was what I grew up loving. I grew up loving like Star Wars and sci-fi and Star Trek. I've seen every episode of Star Trek ever made. I'm a super nerd, whatever. It's what I liked. He doesn't like it. This is nothing against Dave. It's not. I was just, it's a dumb example, but it matters. That like, because my partner didn't like those things and because he sort of used to make fun of them, I stopped doing them, stopped pursuing it. And it's a simple thing, except it's not, because it's a part of who I am. And maybe other people think that it's nerdy. Like, right, you probably have something in your life that someone else is like, that's lame. Like, you wanting to be in a hip hop class, that's lame. You wanting to take ballet at 42, that's lame. You wanting to like, screw that. We get one life, you guys, one life to let our freak flag fly, to let our nerdiness come out, to let our own magic spill forth into the world, to pursue the things that we're into, to like go and try stuff. Like you forget who you are in the pursuit of pleasing other people because you please them in the way they like to show up. You please, the, you please them by trying to be them, right? And you let go of the weird, nerdy, cool things that make you you. It's like when we were in middle school and we tried to be like the cool kids. We tried to dress like them or do our hair like them or put on makeup like them. And we failed miserably because we didn't understand that the best in life is to be ourselves utterly and completely, even if other people think that it's lame, right? So... I don't know, maybe something to think about this weekend is how are you showing up in the world? How are you doing the thing you love? I always ask moms, when moms tell me that they've lost themselves, they're like, I don't know who I am. I always ask, who were you before you were their mama? And maybe you don't have kids, so let me ask this. Who were you before you were trying to please others? Let me ask this. Who were you before you tried to be cool? whether that's college or high school or, or middle school, who were you? What did you love before you were aware that what you loved was not cool? Because if you can get closer to that, whatever it is, that's freedom. That's how you find your community. That's how you find your people. That's how you start to feel more like yourself. That, my friend, 
is how you gain confidence. It's real. All right, you guys. I love you so much. It's Friday. It's going to be a fantastic weekend because we're going to make it so. I'm headed over to shoot Quibi. There's like hundreds of episodes of the show, I feel like, at this point, if you want to go check them out. Um, and what else was I going to tell you? I'll be back on Monday. And that's what I got. Go, uh, if you have the app, go do your movement today. Go check it off. It sounds like this. Drink your water. Love yourself. Do your gratitude. Have a fantastic weekend. I will see you later.